Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew J. Allen, Associate Professor of Saxophone at Georgia College and State University. And in this video, I'll be performing and discussing the 2024-2025 Georgia All-State Middle School Band Audition Etudes for Alto Saxophone. <laughs> the lyrical etude. Now obviously lyrical etudes are a great place to show off a beautiful sound, expressive playing, lots of dynamics. But also we have a little extra information in this etude. At the top for the tempo marking we have moderato maestoso. So the moderate just means moderate tempo. We've got that the quarter note equals 80. But maestoso means majestic. So when you're playing this I want you to think about being regal and just going for those big dynamics and being graceful in them all the while. Also, some of these longer note values, especially the quarters and the half notes, are great places to start experimenting with vibrato. Now vibrato, I'm using it in the video, is that little undulation of the sound. If you're not comfortable with that yet, then pause this video after I tell you what to do. Put into the search bar of YouTube, Andrew Allen Vibrato Van Doren to remember to include it in the description of this video. Um, that's a video I did for my friends over at Doran that'll give you a lot of pointers on getting comfortable with vibrato. One other little piece of information uh, technique-wise in this, in bar seven you've got all those repeated C's and B's. So something that's going to make your life a little easier is instead of flipping back and forth, you can actually use the alternate C. So play your B and then just add the middle side key in your right hand. So it'll take a little bit of getting used to. That's one of the only places I would use it. It doesn't sound great if you hold it out. Um, but in that bar, and in that bar alone, it's a really nice place to use it. So that's something to consider. Now, listen as I play the technical etude. <laughs> So the technical IT's got quite a bit going on. First of all, it's tempo di polacca. Now, polacca is just a fancy uh, alternate name for polonaise, which was originally a Polish folk dance. It's graceful. It's light. Um, you may want to look up a couple examples of a polonaise on YouTube just to get an idea of the style with which you're to play. But basically, it's not heavy, so make sure whatever you're doing is light and carefree. On the articulations, especially the staccatos, don't make them pecky or too short. Think about a two articulation with a lot of air behind it. Uh, remember, staccatos aren't short, they're just separate, so keep them bouncy. Um, a few technique things to keep in mind as you go along. Uh, in measure one, I would use a side B flat when it comes up. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, side B flat is just like one, two, an A, and then you add that lowest side key in your right hand. Uh, with the side of your finger. In measure two, you've got the little grace note before beat two. Now listen to the way that I'm doing it. I'm not drawing a ton of attention to the grace. The grace is just there to draw attention to the F. The F on beat two is going to be right on the beat. So practice that, practice the technique underneath, and then add the grace back in. Don't leave the grace out. You can do it. I believe in you. If you have any questions about it, just contact me and I'll help you with it. Measure three, I'd use side B flat again. In measure four, you gotta think about the timing on that trill a little bit. A lot of people are gonna to wanna to go as fast as possible on the trill and go all the way through the dotted quarter note. It's 
not actually how you should do it. You don't have to go that fast on any trill. Listen to the speed of my trill. I'm kind of warming up into it. And I stop the trill right on beat two. You always want to establish the note again before you move on at the end of the trill. And you're also giving yourself plenty of time to make those graces happen. Right after the trill and the graces in measure four, I'd use a, a, a this B flat. Makes it a lot easier to get to. Measure five, I'd use the side B flat. Um, measure 16, I'd use my side B flat. Also, the trill timing is the same kind of concept as in measure 12. Uh, in both of those, you want to make sure that you're trilling the, uh, the note all the way until the and of three. And then you're going to hold the pitch and give yourself time to do the brace. Measure 13, I'd use a side B flat. Measure 15, uh, in beat two, I'd use a side B flat. And in beat three, I'd use a this B flat. And finally, in measure 16, I'd use a side B flat. So when you're practicing this, make sure that you're going in small chunks, you're using a metronome when you practice, you're starting at a slow enough tempo, tempo that you can really get all the technique. And that may be very slow, but guess what? That's how I practice too, to this day. And just make sure that you're slowly increasing as you go. You have plenty of time on this. If you rush yourself, it's going to end up cramped, it's going to end up uncomfortable. If you give yourself time, work with your metronome in the right way, you're going to get this. So if you have any questions, just contact. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or you'd like a free lesson with me, just reach out to the contact information at the end of this video. Happy practicing and best of luck as you improve as a saxophonist and as a musician.